joining us from Facebook Live. Um, we are here, we are starting the third community meeting for the Colony Park Aquatic Facility. Thank you everybody for being here. Thank you everyone for being here. We are excited to finally reach this important milestone in the project. And so with that, we're going to begin to give you a little bit about what we're gonna be covering in today's meeting. So the agenda for today is we are going to be introducing you to the project team, everyone who has contributed all of their efforts and energy into getting to this point. Um, we're also gonna give you an update on the arts and public places where we are with that project. We have been discussing that with you each time we've met with you. And we also wanna share with you all the input that we've received. We're very thankful to everyone all of our partners at the schools, Volmo Overton, Barbara Jordan, Gus Garcia, and LBJ High School, thank you very much. We've appreciated all your contributions, as well as everyone who's participated online, who has come to the community meetings. We'll be going over what we've heard from you. And then the big reveal will be coming. We'll be sharing with you uh, the design team, uh, the reveal of the pool concept. We'll also be providing you some time for Q&A to give us uh, your questions, your comments, and then we will be discussing next steps with the project. All righty, so that's our agenda for tonight. And with that said, we're gonna go ahead and meet the team. I'm gonna turn it over to Scott Sin, who is with the City of Austin Parks and Recreation Department and the project manager of the project. Thank you, Dr. Cortez, and welcome everybody to our third meeting. Uh, my name is Scott Sim, I'm a landscape architect with the Parks and Recreation Department. Uh, hopefully I don't sound like I'm in a conference room right now on the everybody's video because I am in a conference room. So thank you again for attending. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, also as part of our City of Austin project team, um, she's not here tonight, but Marjorie Flanagan is the Senior Project Manager for Art and Public Places. She's actually on vacation, so I didn't want to pull her away from that. And of course, Jody Jay is our Division Manager for Aquatics. Uh, we'll be running the pool uh, after we get it all built and ready for you to enjoy. So as part of this is also the design team, um, Greg Houston and Sean Bacon, who will be coming up shortly uh, with Marmon Mock uh, Architecture, are the lead designers. Uh, David Nugenbauer with ECM International is the project manager, so they're responsible for keeping the project on time and on budget. Gary Miller with Flint Co. LLC is the construction manager. Uh, this is one of those unique cases where we actually bring the construction company along with us through the design process to help with cost and, and constructability. Uh, obviously a very valuable service. And of course, Dr. Cortez and her team have done a great job with uh, doing the community engagement leads. So um, just thank you from my, from my perspective to everybody on this team. It's been a a pleasure and looking forward to keep going. So Art and Public Places, again, Marjorie couldn't make it tonight, but they have, I know, reached out to several community members and have started the process of getting jury selections or getting folks, uh, let me sure I make they say that right, to get people selected to become a community juror. So if you want to do that or you have interest in doing that, uh, there is a link in the uh, presentation. Um, I don't want to try to describe it here tonight because I'm sure I will mess that up. So uh, this will be posted on the website, so you'll be able to link on it for any of those who are on the phone right now. Um, so, and obviously any questions you, you might have for our public places, feel free to uh, email Marjorie at marjorie.flanagan at austintexas.gov. And so they, that process is going very well and they're really looking forward to it. So please stay tuned. And with that, I believe it's time for me to turn it over back to you, Dr. Cortez. Thank you, Scott. So I mentioned as we started that we have met with so many of you. This project has been so important to the Colony Park community as many of you who have lived there for years have known that there has not been a pool in the area. So it's been a great pleasure for our team to be out in the community, hearing what you have to say, providing us information about what you would like to see for this pool. And personally, I'd like to share a story. In 2014, um, we had one of our first big community meetings out there. Um, we asked kids, what does Colony Park need? And this is the photo that got captured. And as we were going through our work, and we wanted to show you the kids are excited about this pool, what we've heard this entire time, um, that families are as well. So thank you very much. We've appreciate everyone who's participated. So, so what did you tell us? And the first community meeting that we had, we asked you what you envisioned. This was really an opportunity for you to share your vision of what you would see. And as you can see there on that word cloud, it has been something that folks have wanted to be able to experience and have fun. They want it to be somewhere they can take their families. 
They want it to be a welcoming place and on and on and on. These are your voices. These are your words. This is everything you shared with us when we met with you during community meeting number one. You also shared with us your top activities and amenities that you would like to see. And what you're gonna to see today is that all of the things that you shared with us are included in this new concept. Um, these are some rankings of the pool activities, obviously swimming and having swim lessons, as well as going all the way to water exercise, the activities you wanna see in the pool, as well as the amenities. And what you're gonna see is the design team heard you. This is in the pool. These are the rankings. These are the things we heard in meeting number one. Then we came back and we met with you for meeting number two. And we were able to reveal to you three concepts that had various different angles to them. And we got to have you participate and tell us which one met the vision um, of what you wanted to see. And we had about 164 individuals that liked concept C and 51 for B and 44 for A. And so we wanted to reflect this and show you what we heard from you. Um, we also asked you about the location of the pool, where you would like to see that. And concept C again came to the top, as well as the parking lot and how the parking lot was situated. As well as asking you some of these, we also looked and asked you about shade structure and the shape of the pool and the access to the park. The shade structure is important because it's something that's gonna cover the pools and the areas, and this is what you said. Um, we also asked you about the different shapes of the leisure pool. And then more importantly, as you know, the Colony Park District Park opened last year, and we wanted to make sure that families felt they had access to that. So this is what we saw. Um, and as you can see there, concept C continued to rise to the top. So these were the things that we heard from the community. Um, we took in all that information, and now we're here today with you for meeting number three. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to the design team. Uh, Greg Houston, I'm turning it over to you. Thank you, Dr. Cortez. And, and thanks to everyone for attending tonight. We are really excited to be here because this is the third step leading towards a fulfillment of your vision, right? Your, the vision the kids had when they shared what they wanted. Um, so, well, when we had our first meeting with you several weeks ago, we met, we listened to you, we heard what you wanted this pool to be. And we then developed for meeting number two, uh, some ideas, some concepts, some concept plans that were based on what you told us, what you told us in the meeting, what you told us through the surveys. So we listened and developed those concepts. And then when we presented those to you, you told us again, well, we like a lot of things that you've done, but we like some things better than others. And so we took all of those good input and ideas and we worked towards a, a single concept that we're gonna show you tonight. And we're excited about it because it, it really gives you a lot of, of activities and fun. And fun was the one thing that came to the top of the list when you said, when you gave us your input. So as we looked at the project and we've, we've seen before that we're in Colony Park and we're in, in the park of Colony Park. And according to the Aquatics Master Plan, uh, the pool would be located in general area uh, near Loyola Lane. But you all through, um, through scene drawings and understanding the vision, you've selected the best part of the site. We're elevated on the site we have great views, there'll be breezes. You can almost feel the atmosphere out there. Um, and so each of the pools and the building and the parking are gonna work with the land. But what's also important, and you can see in this diagram that while we're in the park, we're connected. We're connected to the Colony Park community. We're connected to other elements in the park so that you can walk to the Aquatic Center. You can bike to the Aquatic Center. You can drive to the Aquatic Center. And so it's a very accessible, open and welcoming arrangement to be able to experience the Aquatic Center. And it's family oriented. There are many things that you can do. You can do many things in the park, you can go play in the fields, and then you can walk over to the pools. 
And within the pools, there are many family oriented activities. It's big and it's welcoming. And it's a cool place. As I mentioned, we're, we're elevated up on the hill, the breezes will blow. Um, it's not just a cool place because it's gonna be cool to look at, but it's gonna have shade. You told us many times, we want shade. And so we're providing shade from trees, shade from shade structure, shade from the building. There will be two pools. There will be a, a open water rectangular pool that can be used for different activities. There will be a, what we're calling a leisure pool and a surrounding pool deck. And there will be a bathhouse with showers and changing rooms and locker. And there will be parking. There'll also be a water slide. And there's going to be a perimeter security fence, but um, between the pool deck and the fence, we'll have some lawn areas where you can lay out, uh, lay in the grass and enjoy the sun when you wanna be in the sun and go back to the shade when you wanna be there. And this will be very accessible. Um, from the time you reach handicap accessible parking to moving to the, to the bathhouse, um, moving into, in and out of the water, it will all be very accessible for all modalities. The first pool we want to talk about is the is the what we call the lap pool. Now the lap pool isn't just for swimming laps, and yes, you could do that. You've asked us for recreational activities and lap swimming, but there's a large open water area. In that open water area, you can see water exercise happening. Uh, there could be learn to swim programs. Um, there is varying water depth uh, noted on this plan at the south end of the or the bottom end of the drawing is a four foot water depth on the upper end of the drawing is a seven foot water depth. And we also have a diving board. So in the diving well, it's deeper. It's down to 12 foot six. But we have some very shallow water in this in the form of a water deck, what we call a water deck or an underwater ledge that's six inches of water. So you can actually lay on this deck and enjoy the water lapping up over you as you watch the, the play in the pool. And you ask for water games, this pool will be designed to be able to have water games. You also see the slide right off the, off to the left. And if you see, look at the, the photograph on the top left, you'll see a, a visual image of what the water slide will be. You'll climb up the stairs to the top of the water, uh, the tower, slide down the slide and splash into the water. But it's positioned in such a way when you come down and splash in the water on the water deck, you can get right back up and, and redo, go back up on the slide. You can see the photo under the water slide uh, is the one meter springboard. And then below that, is an example of shade structures. So we'll have not only trees in the grass around the perimeter, but we'll have shade structures as well. Uh, and this pool is flexible enough. It can have two lap lanes. It can have one lap lane. So it could be configured to have multiple lap lanes and even up to six. The other pool is the leisure pool. It also has an open swim area, but the water depths aren't quite as deep across the entire pool. And so in the middle of the pool, there's a three foot six inch water depth. Now it starts off where the water uh, in the area where it's labeled zero entry beach, that water depth is really zero inches. It's like a beach where there's almost no water depth that slopes down into the deeper water. And within that shallow water, uh, kids can play and relax, and it's a way to ease into the water without being too intimidating. And then there are interactive play structures. And so you see on the photos to the left, there are play features that kids can enjoy with water falling off the, off the play structure. They can climb on the play structure, but very safe, very, very low scale. And then you see the top photo, it's labeled water bench. And on the pool plan, we'll have a, a variety of settings for water bench. In other words, you can sit on a water bench in about 12 inches of water, hang your feet into, into, the, into the pool water, and it might be three feet deep 
or it might be three foot six deep. And there are a variety of configurations. So the underwater bench alcove is another area where a group could gather. It's good for programming. A family could gather in there. They can enjoy that space in a, in a more intimate setting. Uh, or it could be programmed for a learn to swim program as well. Large stairs enable people to sit on the edge of the stairs at varying water depths and enjoy. So there's really a variety of features that happen here. And shade, you asked for shade. We're shading most of the zero entry beach area and we'll have some, some three dimensional images to show you. One other feature that we think is gonna be very dynamic here is the infinity edge. Now what the infinity edge is, it's an overflow of water that falls from the body of water at down. And you can see the photo to the left that gives you a sense of, of how the infinity edge works. But, but what you're looking at is the waterfall side of it. What you'll also see in one of our depictions later is that it provides a very uh, long view out towards downtown Austin. Next. So here's a three-dimensional three, three image, and you asked for shade. We're providing much shade around, even over the water, as well as around the deck. And then you can see some lawn areas right near the water. Uh, those lawn areas will be able to uh, allow somebody to lay out and relax next to the water. And the the infinity edge that we described in the photos is primarily an aesthetic feature, but you can see the couple in the foreground up against the infinity edge, and you can imagine hearing the water fall off the edge and just the sound of that. So uh, if if relaxation and chilling is an activity, then that then we've included that activity as well. You can see the bathhouse beyond. And then as you look out, if you're a parent and you're sitting on the pool deck and you're watching your children in the zero entry, having a good time, you're also com contemplating uh, the tranquil aspects of looking out over the infinity edge beyond. And you can see the water slide off to the right. So a lot of visibility around the pool deck and, and we're capturing the spirit of the elevation of the site by, by capturing the views. Next, activity, diving. So the diving board is on this part of the lap pool. And again, we mentioned the 12 foot depth, uh, but this is an open water area that can be programmed for training, lifeguard training uh, with the depth as well. Next, the bathhouse. The bathhouse will have restrooms, it will have showers, it will have lockers. It'll have all the features that you need for enjoying full enjoyment to change and 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 come dressed for the pool and and enjoy. Um, as you enter the building, you see the word entry there. We've made a wide entrance, and so we put the water slide uh, on axis uh, to help generate excitement as you enter the pool. Uh, the letters LG uh, stand for lifeguard, and the lifeguard will have an office in that position. And the lifeguard will be able to see um, many things going on from that office in the pool, along with the lifeguards who are serving right on the deck. Uh, there'll be a first aid room. And then we'll have a multi-purpose room that will not only be able to open out onto the pool deck where you might have a meeting, you might have a party, but it'll have commanding views out to the west and towards downtown Austin. We've incorporated bicycle parking. You can see that off to the right. So as you come off one of the existing trails, we're extending the sidewalk to meet those trails to make it easy to, to, to walk through the park and then get to the aquatic center. Next. This gives you a sense of the entry and the view as you enter the aquatics complex. You can see the slide in the background and we're gonna have a skylight at the entry uh, we'll have very durable uh, materials um, that will help enclose the pool, but we're also going to have uh, natural ventilation that helps serve and and um, and cool the interior spaces of the of the bathhouse. 
Next. So we've created uh, this concept for you. Um, it's your input. You've helped us get to this point and, and craft a, a pool and aquatics complex that will provide fun, a place for family, and it's welcoming. Thank you very much for allowing us to be part of the process. And I think Dr. Cortez, we're going to uh, listen to more input. All right, thank you, Greg. Okay, everyone, we are now ready to take your questions. Um, you're welcome to put them in the chat. Um, or if you would like to ask your question, you can also raise your hand. We're gonna go to gallery view. For those of you that are streaming, that are watching us on Facebook Live or our YouTube channel, um, you're more than welcome to put your question in the chat. We are monitoring it right now and we'll be able to ask it in our meeting. So if you'd like to ask any questions, please feel free to do so. So we're happy to open it up right now at this time. We're here for you to listen to what questions you might have. Okay, I'm scanning the room. So just give me a couple of minutes. Brandon, I see that you have your hand up. Brandon? Uh, yeah, uh, overall, I thought it was a fantastic um, presentation. And uh, thank you, uh, Barbara Scott, for pushing for that infinity edge. I think it sounds like you guys are very excited about it. And I think it was great. The only thing that, that just stood out a little bit was uh, the entrance. Um, it's like this facility is so amazing and has all these great things, but it's just the entrance, the brown and gray. And I don't know if those were final paint choices, but it just, it's a little gloomy. That's, that's really the only note I have. Thank you, Brandon. Does anybody, yeah, Greg? Greg, I see you teeing up something over there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I had to find my my microphone to unmute myself. But good comments, Brandon. Uh, but you are right. Uh, these are preliminary images. We have a ways to go on the building design, and no, the color selections are not final. I I think what we're trying to tell uh, you in the community is that um, we're going to craft a building that's very functional. It helps you, but it's also very durable. And and so we have a ways to go on material selections. Yeah. Just. It still could have a little bit of life and flavor, especially Absolutely. I feel like uh, a taste of the east side. Like it, it, it would be nice if, if when someone walked in or walked to the front, they'd be like, of course, this is an east side Austin pool. Like this is, um, so that's it. Thank you. You know, there is, and to that point, there is one component that is also gonna be further developed and that's the incorporation of art in the project. And I think the art is gonna be one of those things that makes this um, a, a, a pool project of place for Colony Park. It's gonna represent what your community is. Thank you, Brandon. Nina, I see that you have your hand up. Hey, yes, um, I actually had that same thought that came to mind when I saw that rendering. Um, it kind of looked like a CMU building with a metal deck. Um, Cause yeah, that's kind of, you know, not very welcoming type of building. So I heard you all say um, you're still deciding on the materials. Um, what types were in mind for that for the building? Like concrete walls or steel building or something? Uh, we're considering several now. Um, and, and in, in the uh, material options, we're thinking about um, perhaps a, a, a colored uh, masonry or we're thinking about uh, some colored concrete, or we're thinking about some stone. And, um, but because we also want to be a natural ventilated building, uh, there will be some uh, metal on the building and the metal can have many color options, many color options. So, okay. um, so uh, yes, thank you. Those are good comments. And, and we fully intend to kind of further the development of that. When you say colored um, CMU or, or concrete, are you talking about like the actual colored CMU or painted CMU? No, uh, probably not painted, but actual okay. in integral color. Okay. And, it, and that material has a real richness to it, but it's mm -hmm. also very durable. Okay, gotcha, thanks. 
Thank you, Nina, for your question. Ms. Scott? Hello, everybody. First, let me thank each of you for being here. I was not late. I was actually watching on Facebook. But I, I wanted to say that um, there were good questions about the color and uh, that uh, we've had conversations with, um, with Jody J and also Kimberly McNeely, the director. And when it comes time to pick the colors, the community is going to be involved in that as well, because uh, this will be here with us for the rest of our lives. And so we want to make sure that we get it right. We get the colors that, that, that we want. I asked the same question about the red slide, because I just couldn't see a red slide in Texas heat and 100 degrees you know, with young kids trying to go down. And so that's, I was told the same that, thing that you're being told. It's preliminary. And when it comes time to some other features, the community is at the table uh, with this. And we are going to uh, hopefully pick some colors that are inviting. Uh, we don't want to pick colors. I know a lot of the buildings that for parks and recreation, they look like almost like, um, almost like jails because the, the color is so drab and that's not what we want for this park that we fought for close to 50 years for. So the community will be at the table when all of that is done. Thank you, Ms. Scott. And Nina, I saw that your hand was still up. Did you have an additional question? I just want to make sure. You good? I did not. I'll put that down. Thank you. Okay, no worries. Okay, what other questions do we have? Any comments? Any comments for what you saw? I have a question. Yes, Pauline. Um, once the pool open up and uh, with all the different areas in the neighborhood, different uh, sections of the neighborhood, and this is like going to be the only pool, I guess, you know, within the neighborhood, but when you reach out, there's no pool. How will you control the crowd of people that, that will be attending the pool? Do we have some in the city? I, I, I guess I can answer that question. So, um, you know, we do have, um, We'll have gate attendants, you know, allowing um, groups into the pool and, and making sure that children are are uh, with children with parents and um, things like that. We also have um, policies for daycares and groups like that. So we will be able to control having large groups coming to the pool or not coming to the pool so that we have access. Um, only for the community and when the community wants to be there. Um, I think it's going to be a large facility that's going to have a large um, attendance um, and, uh, or capacity. Um, we don't have the capacity yet, but I think it will be able to hold um, several and hundreds of people at one time. Thank you. Thank you for your question, Pauline. Anyone you. else? Uh, may I ask something? Sarah Jackson. Miss Jackson, welcome. Yes. You still see my picture up there. <laughs> no worries, but we can hear you. Yes. Um, around the pool itself, how much parking are we allowing there just around the pool area? Has that been determined at this time? Yes, ma'am. Uh, this is this is Scott. Um, it's fifty spaces. Fifty. Yes, ma'am. That's what's uh, outlined in the aquatic plan. It is fifty spaces for a community pool. But Scott, won't they also be able to park up at the rec center as well, and then walk down to the pool? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. And, and on an accessible path, Miss Scott, to the whole way to go ahead and highlight that. Um, it will be so basically from the rec center, you can um, do a concrete accessible pathway all the way to the front door of the pool. 
Okay, so it's not just going to be 50 spaces. It'll be 50 spaces there where the pool is located. Correct. But there's going to be still the other parking at the yes. recreation. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Everything up at the at the school and the rec center is all definitely, I mean, that's all public parking. So you can definitely park there, come down. You can park at the aquatic center and go. Yes, ma'am, that's all, all true. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Yes, if I could, Ms. Dr. Yep. Cortez, sorry. Uh, one thing I did want to want to remind everybody is, and you may have to go back and look, but I believe we did ask for building materials in the first community meeting, and concrete and steel was what came up to the top. So that was kind of the, and, and I just say that as a material starter, uh, everything everybody said about colors and what Ms. Scott said about colors is absolutely true. We will definitely work with the community to figure that out, but that was kind of the direction that the design team started with. Um, and, and it's actually worked out fairly well, at least from a cost standpoint as well. Um, so that's going to help us in that aspect of things. So that was, I just want to remind everybody, I know not everybody may have attended all these meetings. So, um, and that's definitely still on the website if anybody wants to go back and look, but that was the, what gave us the direction to start with the uh, building design. Right. And did we mention uh, about the pool being heated? Oh, it, we did not. Greg, would you like to elaborate, sir? Yeah, no, I'm sorry, uh, but yes, uh, the pool water will be heated, and and this which will one? Uh, well, we're programmed to have the lap pool heated. Okay. Yeah, the, the activity pool, Miss Scott, will not be heated. Right. Pool. It right. Will not no, it's be just going to be the lap pool. It's going to be the six laps. Yes. And also, I think um, from my notes that I had, um, we had discussed the limestone as a building material. So we might need to go back and look at that. Okay. I don't know exactly what it was going to be used for, but I just have it in my notes. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, we can look at that. That's definitely an option. Okay. You right, Ms. Scott. And, and so when I mentioned stone earlier, I meant limestone. And so that is definitely one of the options that we're looking at now. Nina. Hi, yes. Um, you also mentioned... Um, perimeter like security fence was the plan for like an ornamental type metal fence um or something else of that sort like palisade or something what it what was in mind for that yes it's uh the fence will be ornamental in nature non-climbable and um but in order to make sure that uh, toddlers don't wander out and during uh hours when the pool is closed people don't wander in yeah for sure yeah, because that's kind of important because if it's just regular chain link fence, that's not very welcoming, <laughs> um, if you will. <laughs> yeah, Nina, just so you know, our standard for uh, parks and rec or for aquatics is a six foot tall um, black uh, rail fence. I think this might be the best way to describe it. Basically, all the um, rails are all vertical and they're uh, not greater than four inches apart all the way through. Um, some of the stuff we've used in the past has been, we're trying to upgrade that a little bit so it's not so easily kicked in. Um, you can get a lower grade quality fence on that that becomes easily break in -able. That's really a word. Um, so we're not going to do that. We're going to look at trying to upgrade that to make sure. But either way, it's a no climb, keeps people coming. Just what we said, can't keep them in and keep them from uh, getting out at the same time. Awesome. I do have another question. Um, the entrance coming in from the street. So obviously, like you're all saying, it's going up on the hill. So you've got to drive up um, that slope. Um, can you all help describe like at the street, at the intersection, is it on, because Loyola does a thing where it's, um, it goes up and down. Can you all help describe what that looks like or like if there's going to be traffic problems there or whatnot? Well, um that the, the driveway will come down to, as you approach Loyola, it'll be more of a gradual slope. And so you'll be able to stop with good visibility from your car uh, before you enter Loyola Lane. Now it will require us to kind of move some earth back so we create that good visibility, but uh, you'll be able to see there. And it, it should be fairly level as you enter Loyola. Uh, we, we know that the, the speeds on Loyola um, uh, right now, they're, they're fast enough where traffic um, is manageable, but we'll make sure as you exit the site and as you enter the site that you have a smooth enough surface to, to drive across comfortably without worrying about traffic oncoming. 
Do you recall if it's at the top of that slope of the of Loyola or at the bottom? It's it's not quite at the top, um, okay. but um, but but you should have good visibility from this uh, curb cut uh, because we're actually making use of an existing cut in the median. And so you should have good visibility from that point up to the top of the hill with enough with enough range. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. The other the other kind of thing that I don't know if we can do or not. Well, I don't think we can. Is there? I don't think you'll have a left out um, because the way that intersection is designed right now is uh, going. Let me sort of get it right. East. An island. Like, yeah. There's an island there, so we're not going to get rid of that. Um, and it's a left lane in. So from what eastbound. Uh, Loyola, you can come in, but to then come out and then try to turn left again, you won't be able to do that because that island will keep you from doing that. Okay. So you have to go right, go to Sendera, probably flip a UE and go back that way if you are coming from eastbound Loyola. Okay, good to know. Thank mm -hmm. you. That's all I've got so far right now. Thank you. Oh, keep them coming. Thank you, Nina. Nina, there's also a comment in the chat that's probably related to your question and Ms. Scott suggested uh, she mentioned there are plans for pedestrian beacon or traffic light to control for traffic. It's a good question oh, that yeah, you're asking that, there. That would be important <laughs> too, yes. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Other questions or comments? We have a bike lane project on Sendero Hill working its way through ATD. Um, so if there's any opportunity to provide a clear connection to that bike path, but uh, I just wanted to make sure it was on your, your radar. It's uh, from the uh, NPP program. Great. Thank you, Brandon. We have that. We also have your comments here um, for different water activities. And the great thing they mentioned earlier is activities can rotate in the poll. Um, so yes. And, and Brendan, to kind of follow up too with your uh, bike lane connection thing, we do have that one trail that we will put in um, that- I saw that, yeah, that's- That'll be, you know, it's kind of hard to get to that intersection that you're referring to from, because it kind of, if you look on the map, that intersection goes literally right into where the drainage channel comes down. Yeah. And so it's hard to get a perfect connection there, but we're trying to get as close as we can. You know, you'd have to be on the, the Loyola sidewalk for a, whole, a pretty short stretch, I think. So I, th I think that'll work. At least uh, we'll get in, obviously get into a little more details when you look further on just to make sure that fits. Would it be possible for that small section to be widened to a shared use path? Potentially. I mean, I, I would like, work with ATD on that and ask them. Um, but I mean, ours is going to be at least six foot wide, if not wider, but it'll be, okay. we do ours six feet wide pretty much as a, as a minimum. So if not, yeah, you know, close to a shared use, but I think for the amount of traffic that you would have there, that would I would think would be sufficient for everybody. Thank you. Okay, just doing one more scan of the room here. We don't have any questions that are coming in from Facebook, but thank you for being there. We see you. We see that several of you are watching us live. Um, and then Nina, I do see your hand up. Do you have any questions? Hi, okay. my name is Mark. Yes. Um, Hi, Mark. Stops. Uh, I, I have a, this is a post-construction question related to staffing. So if you look around Austin, look at, um, you know, right now we're in a bit of a hiring doldrum for getting available, you know, teenagers and young adults to staff the pools for facilities. Uh, I had a question related to the priority that our pool will have once constructed, um, comparing it to, you know, pools like Northwest Park or pools like, you know, Little Stacy Pool, you know, they're, they're not full of water right now just due to, you know, staffing or COVID, but once the pool's constructed and completed, is there a priority as a newly, you know, kind of champagne bottle smashed pool to have enough people there to run the show? I mean, people want to go to it, but are we going to be fighting for that same kind of, uh, you know, there's staffing resources that other pools in Austin are having the same challenges to, to fight for. Hi, this is Jody, um, Aquatic Division Manager question. Uh, good question. Um, the, uh, obviously the, the, the staffing issue that we have right now is, is really related to um, the 
this shutdown and a, we were frozen for over a year um, and we were not able to hire a trained lifeguard until March of 2021. So that is, that's the reason to the staffing issue right now, but I'll point you point out to our two newest facilities are um, uh, Shipe and Go Valley. And both of those pools are staffed and have lifeguards. And so that was our priority um, this season to get those pools open. And that would be our um, priority for Colony Park. Absolutely. The other thing to point out is that um, Colony Park is going to be a year round pool. So it's going to have an audit automatically it's going to have lifeguards already working um, as we get to the summer season. We'll just need to bump up those numbers. Also, we have a program called Swim ATX, and it is a, it's a program that we have uh, with AISD. And in previous years, um, LBJ was um, a program, uh, was in that program, and we're going to go back to LBJ and say, hey, we've now got a pool right down the street that that your students can come and get PE credit, learn to swim and become lifeguards. And those lifeguards would be, you know, strictly for Colony Park pool. So we're going to try to feed lifeguards to it um, through the, the, the high school as well. Okay, that's that's awesome. I, I, I grew up in Travis that's Heights. Awesome. So, you know, most of our friends that went to Crockett or Travis or even LBJ, worked at big Stacy pool and there was never a shortage there. So that's a right. Awesome. Absolutely. Being a year round pool is going to help too. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. And Nina, I can see you in the back. Where is Thank you? I have one more question. Um, yes, of course. Right, this is a design related question. Um, just curious. Um, wondering about like cool pool lights. I know the kids would like that. <laughs> if there was like colored lights or whatever, um, you know, that light up the pool, um, just, yeah. is that an option or is it in the thing? Yeah, it'll absolutely have light lighting because we want to be able to be able to open this pool when it's dark, right? Exactly. Especially you you need yeah. LED lighting. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. LED light. Yeah. And it will, they will be in the water and it, yeah. it'll, it'll be to code, which is the re requirement when we're building pools now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. I, I don't think that answers your question she's just saying can the light bulbs be leds so you can make them any kind of color red green blue. as a decorative type of feature yeah as a decorative well, feature. i guess that would be a uh, <laughs> great question <laughs> like the hue bulb philips hue bulb something like that um yeah i i can chime in on that guys um this like is like if you've been hard. to the austin fc stadium they're all leds they all go green at different times that's, right. that's what we're talking about yeah, go ahead, Darren. Yep, sorry. Um, Darren Bavard, Councilman Hunsaker, will be responsible for the aquatic design portion of the project. So designing and engineering the pool and pool systems, which includes the underwater lights that we're discussing. The pools absolutely will have underwater lights. As Jody mentioned, there are code requirements for how the pools are lit, both from overhead and from underwater. Um, so there certainly are color changing LED underwater lights available. Um, if those are incorporated, they will be in supplement to the code required white underwater light um, because that's what the code requires. So if we have the underwater lights uh, to code and we also want to add some additional effects with some color changing elements, those can be done in certain locations within the pool or maybe to accent certain features and things like that to add some excitement and creativity um, you know, during twilight hours. <laughs> Thank you, Darren. Thank you, Nina, for your question. Ms. Miller, I see that you have your hand up, Ms. Miller. Yes, this is a, um, I am referring my comment to Ms. Jody J uh, about lifeguard training and stuff. Uh, back in my day, they offered free swimming lessons at Rosewood Park. So, and there was never a shortage of lifeguards. So my thing is, uh, when everything opens back up, not waiting till the kids get into high school to teach them how to swim. I start learning how to swim when I was eight right. or nine years old. So I think it's something that it needs to, uh, swimming lessons need to be offered again, started at a younger age because I went from a turtle to what I learned how to swim up and down Rosewood Park and then uh, then giving school. 
So uh, that's how we had plenty of lifeguards back in the day. So waiting to a child get in high school, that's not helping them at all. So I'd like Absolutely. to see something started before high school. We've got, we've got it. Yeah, we've got a lot of options. First of all, we have scholarships for anybody that is looking for swim lessons. My facade my my rule is is we never turn a child away from swim lessons they are they we do have scholarships also we have a couple of programs that that do the same thing um we have swim uh swim safe and uh, billy might be familiar with that and delano that we do at the recreation centers we work with the recreation center centers and we bring the kids over during the summer um, and the summer program to give them free swim lessons it's a it's a program that we have with the uh, austin american statesman and they pay for that program so it is free to children and we will have it at colony park we also have um another project program that we started several years ago where we work with elementary schools um, between uh, first and third grade. And um, at the end of the school year before school lets out, um, we will um, we provide um, transportation if needed. We will bring the kids to the, the, the pool and provide swim lessons for two weeks. Um, through, through the elementary school. Of course, we have to get the elementary school to agree to it, but we've had a lot of success um, and we're actually in four elementary schools now and we'll try to add some more at uh, Colony Park. And that's another reason why we are very excited to have um, warm water because we can do that um, throughout the year um, as long as we have water, warm water. I'm going to still, why is it so difficult? I mean, why do we have to have scholarships? Why is it that we just can't get the lifeguards like they used to do? And, well, let, any child, and let any child that wants to learn how to. Yeah, we've got a lot of options for every I'm child sure. and what works for them. I'm just confused. That's that's something, uh, Ms. Miller, that we will continue to work with part on and make sure that any child that is in this area or any area, if they come to us that wants to learn how to swim, we will make sure that they will yeah. get swimming lessons. Yeah, we won't. We will not push a push child away. Any child that wants swim lessons, we will find a, a way to get them to swim lessons. Thank you, Miss Helen. All right, so I don't see any other questions here. I think that wraps up our Q&A session. I'm going to just do one more scan. I think we're good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Scott Sin. He's gonna cover next steps. We wanna share with you what's happening next with the project. Thank you, Dr. Cortez. And thank everybody for your questions, your feedback. That was wonderful. So. So you can see on the timeline here, I'll even start from the beginning. First community meeting back in January of 2021, feels so long ago. Obviously, we did our second meeting in April, at the end of April, if everybody remembers. So now we're at the third community meeting here at the end of June, 1st of July, 2021. So our next step is to get to the end of design stage, as you see there kind of in the bottom of that. So what that is, just for everybody's information, is uh, taking the information you've given us here, obviously tonight, uh, with all the information you've already given us, and now we get down to the, I like to say, the dirty details. And so we start putting all the sizes and the pipe sizes and all the things that uh, you really don't want to hear about into the plans in order to get this built, constructed, um, and ready to go. So that takes about, will take us to the end of the year to prepare those plans. Um, and obviously, once we get those prepared, we got to get them uh, submitted for permit because uh, City of Austin will not let us build your pool without said permit. And so we have to go through the permitting process, which for the City of Austin is roughly taking about a year for most projects that we've been in, involved with lately. Um, so we wanted to go ahead and plan for a year. Obviously, we're going to do everything we can to shorten that time frame. Um, and I say that more for uh, Flint Co. because I know they would love to start construction uh, prior to 2023. But right now, that's kind of where we are anticipating um, the, the process to go. So we 
The permitting process, once we get our drawings done at the end of this year, submit those. City starts to review those. We get our permit issued by the end of 2023. Flint Coast starts construction and hopefully we'll be done. Well, I should say hopefully we'll be done by the end of 2023 with the pool open. So that's where we are in our timeline. That's the plan that we have uh, moving forward. And obviously we're going to do everything we can to make that plan happen. See Thank you, Scott. <laughs> so with that said, um, we want to thank everyone who has tuned in, who has been part of this process. I know many of you have taken the time and energy to be at these meetings. I know it's time away sometimes from your family or other things to do. So we want to thank you for being here. Also, everybody who's joined us throughout these three meetings, um, we could not do it without your feedback and your input and your comments. You make our team better because we're able to give you something that you want. And so we wanna thank you for being part of this process. It's been a great six months um, on behalf of the team. Um, I know Brandon will be able to get to your question um, as we wrap up, but thank you everybody for joining us live as well on Facebook um, through our YouTube channels. Um, we appreciate all your feedback.